if I can ask people to take their seats uh, or take the conversation out to the corridor, um, ideally uh, one or the other, doesn't matter which, I don't mind. Um, so our next presentation is about ONAP, which is a, a Linux Foundation project which is, uh, uh, has got a lot of momentum right now. It's a, it's a, a platform for uh, the automation and management of uh, virtual network functions on, a, on, a, on an NFE platform. Uh, so without further ado, I'll leave it to Javier Martial and Christophe to present ONAP. Thank you. Hello. Okay, coming. so bear with us one second until the computer starts. Um, maybe we can uh, introduce ourselves. Yes. So, so um, we work for at and in Namur. Um, I, graduate, I graduate from ULB here, so I'm kind of home. <laughs> and um, we've been working on software development since many years, 20 for me and 15 for um, Christophe. Yeah. And yes, we've been into this uh, industry for quite a few years now. Uh, let me start the presentation right away. Okay. <coughs> okay, so ONAP. Um, what we will do is uh, try to introduce you to ONAP because it's quite a young uh, open source project. Uh, we don't even have a celebrator first year, so we are very young. And um, we'll give you a quick overview of what ONAP is and what it's trying to do. And uh, since this is all uh, very theoretical, um, we'll go through a, a use case that is implemented in our first release called uh, VCP. Um, and then we'll touch base on uh, what what uh, control loop is and uh, why we would uh, we would want to do that in uh, in an SDN network. And we have recorded actually the, the demo to avoid the demo effect, <laughs> limit yeah. the risk. We have videos, so we are sure it's going to work. So um, as Marshall was saying, we both have been working to uh, the telecom industry for a few years now. And we are, uh, I'm contributor to ONAP and Marshall is uh, CLAMP uh, PTL, which means a primary technical lead. lead for one of the application within ONAP. Yeah, the one about control loop, actually. Yeah. So, uh, what is ONAP? So, as I said, it's a young uh, open source project that was formed in March 2017. Um, and it's actually the merging of two uh, previously open source project from two big network service provider, one which was called OpenO, um, which is um, built by uh, <coughs> China Telecom and ZTE, and uh, OpenEcomp, which is uh, the AT&T one. Uh, so we both merged uh, the solution to try to get to a common understanding of what would be um, an orchestrator for SDN. So what is ONAP really? Uh, so it's a platform, platform meaning it's a collection of applications. Uh, you'll see in the next slide, don't, don't get frightened, there are a lot of applications. Um, and it's meant to, to orchestrate the life cycle of VNFs. Um, and it's, it's mainly divided in two main pieces. Um, on the left of the, of the graph, you have what we call the service and recipe design. So this is really what we call the design time. When you speak about uh, VNF, uh, it's not just only about taking one and loading it up in the, in the network. Most of the, of the time you want the ability to combine them, uh, to create something a little bit more innovative or something that gives a, a, a competitive edge. So you want to have uh, something that allows you to uh, mix them up, test them, design them, certify them, uh, make sure you also put some room for licensing um, because obviously we, we all like open source but there are uh, commercial products all, out there and uh, you want to be able to meet both worlds. Um, and once you've done that, you, you want to push that to what we call the runtime. 
the runtime is really the thing that's going to do the orchestration, going to instantiate the function in the cloud, and uh, do all the lifecycle management. So this is the architecture. As I said, it's quite a few applications. Uh, so on the left, again, uh, the design part, where you see uh, where we have the a VNF SDK. So that's an SDK that allows uh, VNF uh, to be built for ONAP. We'll touch base on that a little bit later. Resource onboarding, service production design, policy, uh, all the, the things that you want to create and then store into a big catalog database. Um, that's when it's certified, is then pushed on the right to the uh, runtime environment. The runtime environment being mostly the orchestration part, so the service orchestrator, which will uh, execute the, let's say, blueprint, recipe, whatever you call it that will really instantiate the thing on the network. And you have uh, also on the right something called ANAI, which is a graph database to store and keep track of what you've created in the network. Um, and then a, a data collection uh, engine that is able to get events from these VNF and uh, run microservices uh, on top of it to well, you know, do, do some analytics and take clever, uh, clever advantage of, the, of the, all the programmatic uh, environment that we have. And the policy framework, which uh, Martial will tell you about, which is involved in the, in the closed loop area. And then below, we have uh, adapters, um, which is essentially the, the thing that the orchestrator triggers uh, to connect to the to the different uh, cloud and uh, execute the, uh, the recipe. Okay. So enough for the theory. Let's take a proper use case. Um, VCP is one of our first use, use case that has been implemented in our first release called Amsterdam. Uh, it's very new because it's uh, from November last year. And this is about uh, moving from the traditional uh, uh, residential gateway that you probably all have at your home. Uh, these little things are doing a lot of uh, functions if you look at them. Um, and it's actually quite been a, an arms race really from the, uh, from the start. Uh, you have multiple versions of them. Some are doing uh, um, even uh, DLNA uh, or uh, really uh, advanced cool stuff that you can have on your own. But the problem with that is that it's an, it's an expensive piece of kit, uh, which, which means, and it's also very uh, rigid in the, in the sense that most of the network service provider, they have one flavor of that. And uh, to avoid that you tweak too much with them, they, they, limit, it, uh, they limit the access to it. And really, uh, some people are also staying on older version of these box and are unhappy. Uh, it's also a very uh, time-consuming and resource-consuming thing for network service provider to, uh, you know, have some call centers to fix these uh, or have even some people going to your home uh, to try and fix that uh, if something goes wrong. So uh, there is an, a specification by the broadband uh, forum uh, called and. Um, NERG, Network Enhanced Residential Gateway, where what we will do is essentially strip that box of the complexities that it has, have something very simple, uh, a, a very basic hardware uh, that will be deployed at your home. Or for that matter, you could even think uh, not replacing the one that you have and just put it in bridge mode uh, and move all the uh, networking functions as virtual functions uh, in the cloud of the network service provider. Um, this will actually trans translate all these to virtual functions. So they, these virtual functions can be um, on, the, on the operator's cloud, and we call that the edge cloud. So uh, you'll see in the coming uh, years more and more small data centers that are going to uh, pop up in uh, big cities and where these network functions will be actually running. Uh, the advantage of that is that uh, 
you delegate all the um, uh, maintenance of the softwares to uh, the network service provider. And uh, for people who don't need uh, some of the specific uh, uh, super cool function, you may even think that you don't have to pay for that. And you can have a very simple just uh, internet gateway. And for people who like to you know, share their videos or even have access to uh, content that would be closer to your uh, home on the edge data center, be able to stream directly from the uh, uh, network operator data center. So um, if we want to orchestrate that into uh, ONAP, well, we start from uh, specification, which is actually doing exactly what I said. It's uh, stripping the uh, function of the residential gateway in two, one which is virtual on the right and one which is physical on the left. Um, and um, what we did with ONAP is try and simulate uh, or the use case. Uh, we didn't have uh, an open source home to use, so we simply created some emulators um, to simulate the home network. We have actually two gateways there, and we created some infrastructure uh, VNFs that are uh, actually mostly already there in the network uh, service provider uh, environment. So this is all software, and uh, we want to load that software into ONAP. So that's the design part, remember? We take this approach and we will design our, uh, our VNF uh, with that in mind. So we need a function for all of these boxes. Um, and then we will uh, load that into ONAP and uh, run this uh, orchestration so that it spins that up. On the far right, you have a small web server, an Apache web server, to show that we've established connectivity between uh, the residential gateway and what would be the internet or uh, whatever provider you could, uh, you could think of. So uh, what do we have to do? Well, we have to uh, upload a descriptive model of the virtual function. Right now, um, ONAP supports Heat, OpenStack Heat, and Tosca. Uh, we have to run through all the onboarding uh, uh, piece and then uh, create the catalog entry and do the certification and distribute that to the runtime. So what did we use to simulate all that? Well, you have here all the list of open source that we, that we used. Uh, so VPP that you heard about just before to simulate the residential gateway and some other uh, open source software to create the VDHCP, VAAA, and VDNS. So, uh, the descriptive model, uh, just uh, uh, a look at it, it's, a, it's a, a collection of YAML files with some, uh, with some uh, tree dependencies. You can define variables. And you see it's essentially, if you look at that in red, defining what flavor of VM we need to run the software on, uh, what uh, networking we need to establish, and then uh, a series of scripts to... Uh, actually download the software on the VM, start it, configure it, uh, so that the cloud understands what we want to achieve with that. Uh, after that, once it's instantiated, we'll run uh, lifecycle management, monitoring metrics, and so on. So the, the ultimate goal, if you think of it, is that once we have uh, run this use case once, you could think of this platform orchestrating tons and tons of uh, network function dynamically, and you would have a, a, a frightening picture like this where you, your cloud is really something kind of organic, dynamic, that can uh, automatically change and uh, be fixed uh, uh, by this uh, huge uh, automation platform. So I have a small video to try and quickly show you the onboarding process. So what you will see here, I'll pause the video once, but it will be quick because it's an accelerated view. Um, you will see all the onboarding process. So here we have created a zip file with all the YAMLs uh, describing our software, and it will be loaded into ONAP. You will see the graphical interface, uh, and you will see that the user logs out and logs in again. This is because it's uh, actually different 
uh, roles. Uh, you have a, a designer role, and then you have a tester role that will certify the, the, the package, and then the distribution will occur. So let me just run the video. Hope it will show up properly. So you see it's logging to the design. Uh, it's selecting the type of VNF, um, loading the, the file. It will drag and drop. You'll see it's very quick. Uh, this, this takes actually quite uh, some time if you have to do it. You see it's parsing the file and telling you if there are errors. Um, and it's creating and associating different uh, uh, variables for the environment. Um, descriptive uh, definition, then logging out, logging in again, and then running all the uh, uh, certification part. You will see that he, he will combine different VNFs, the five VNFs that we have seen, to create really, this is this piece, the, 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 the complex virtual function. So it's really modeling, modeling based, um, and then he will certify and run the uh, so in the interest of time, I will speed up a little bit. So here you will see the actual instantiation. On the top left, you have the, the theory. Okay. On the, on the bottom left, you have the script that is actually triggering the ONAP API for the instantiation. And on the right, you have the OpenStack dashboard, where you see all the VMs popping out and the networking uh, being established between the, the three, uh, all the components. Okay, and you see it's starting to uh, spin up all the VNFs. Okay, and once it's done, I think I still have that. Uh, it's just, yeah, running a series of tests. No, okay, no, probably it's in the next video. Okay, so that's it for the instantiation. Now, Marshall will talk to you about the control loop. Yes, so after your VNF has been instantiated, uh, you need to have um, some tools in order to take care of the life cycle of the VNF and to take actions in case of, uh, of issue. That's where the control loop uh, comes into the picture. So it, it has different pieces. So. The first one being about collection of the of the data you need to uh, to use to um, compute your KPIs, etc. And that collection is done on the DCE platform, which is the data analytics that um, Christoph mentioned about in the ONAP uh, list of application. In the, it's the also on top of that uh, analytics that you will run the microservices that are going to do the computation on your data to um, detect eventually issues. And then you need to, um, to take actions. Uh, those actions are done through policy, which is um, a big set of rules uh, that are triggered by the microservices that are running on DCAE to say, OK, um, uh, this, is, this is the action that I need to take. And that action might be um, uh, asking the application controller, which is also another part of the ONAP, to restart or to, um, uh, or to migrate to a new software, uh, depending on the type of issues. And this is the close loop part. You also another kind of action, which is a more open loop, where you will send a message to um, an external ticketing system for a human to take an action, because uh, that's the only way to um, to solve the issue. So for the control loop, we have also two main areas of um, which are the design time and the runtime. During the design time, you will actually um, stitch together the different microservices that you want to, uh, to use uh, to uh, exercise your control loop. And then you will um, out of the, after, after having stitched together all those uh, microservices, you will generate another YAML file that will describe uh, that control loop in a way that is uh, understandable by um, the DCE uh, application, which is uh, running a Cloudify um, uh, 
to, um, to, to, um, to spin up the microservices. And then you have the, the home time part, which is really about um, uh, configuring the control loop, uh, triggering the deployment, and uh, uh, taking care of the life cycle of the, of the control loop to see uh, uh, if you need to start, stop, uh, or your control loop, if there is some issue with the control loop itself. And uh, if you want to, um, for instance, update the control loop with new parameters, that is done um, uh, during the life cycle management. So this is the overall view of the control loop. So this is the DCA platform where um, most of the work is being done. And you see that here uh, the VNF are going to send um, data to, um, to DCA. Right now in ONAP, we are trying to use the VES format, which is um, a format that has been put into um, Placed by um, AT&T to try to harmonize all the um, uh, alarms and KPI coming from the VNF in a single format to have uh, 10,000 format to support, which makes things more complicated. And then, uh, once the, those data has been collected, they will go through different microservices. And at the end, um, the last microservice will trigger uh, a policy depending on what you want to do uh, as action, and that policy will then trigger um, maybe an application controller or maybe SO. If, for instance, the action is to scale up a new VM, then you can trigger uh, the Swiss orchestrator to trigger that, um, that new VM. I think you will see this in action. It's maybe more. Yeah, this is also another video to show how the... So you see here packets going through and uh, one of the net VNF on the VCP has some packet loss uh, which are acceptable, but at some point uh, the threshold will be, and you see it's reporting this event to DCAE, which is not taking any action uh, right now, but uh, you will see that we'll reach the threshold where it becomes not acceptable anymore, and that will trigger the action on the control loop. Uh, you will see that will become red in a few seconds. And DCAE will then uh, forward this to, um, to uh, policy, which will, here it comes, you see it's becoming uh, unacceptable, and then DCAE will trigger the policy <coughs> which will actually then trigger APSI to reconfigure the, the VNF, which is rebooting, yeah. <laughs> in this case, <laughs> the usual reboot, right? And no telemetry during that time, and once the conditions are fixed, then the closed loop is complete. So you should yeah. also notice that in the, control, in the control loop, or closed loop in this case, um, sometimes the action will continue be, uh, on being tried until uh, a signal is, 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 is given back, uh, to the control loop to say, okay, the, um, the issue has been resolved, I can stop trying to, to solve it. Okay, it's the end of the presentation. Yes, right on time. <laughs> right on time, yes. I don't know if there are any questions. Thank you, any questions? I have a question. Uh -huh. sure. Okay. Um, so, um, how, how big is ONAP? How much requirements does it have in terms of resources? What's the minimum installation of ONAP yeah. that's useful to somebody, maybe for outside of a telco environment, to, to use it? So uh, ONAP is pretty big. <laughs> At the start, it's required really a, a huge setup to run. This is because it's, um, it was designed to be you know, the big scalable thing uh, running on multiple data center. So we've been trying to shrink it. Okay. So now there is a, actually a project very interesting in ONAP, which is called OOM, uh, which is running all this in a Kubernetes cluster. Okay? So if you want to run all the containers and all the things, you'll still need something big. Uh, I think they've come from something that needs 200 gigabytes of RAM to something much practical like 53. But you don't need all the pieces to run. So, I mean, since it's a, it's a, a Kubernetes uh, uh, setup, you can choose the containers you want to run. If you want to try the design time, you just spin up the design time part. So it's shrinking down, and 
There is even a project to run this on Raspberry Pi, so we'll see how it goes, but uh, it's, it's, in the, it's in the works. Any other questions? Are you planning to support only OpenStack or also other questions? Yeah. So the question is, do you want to support only OpenStack? Well, the, the answer is no. There is a multi-cloud uh, multi project and multi-vim multi uh, where right now we support OpenStack because that's our legacy. But no, we will extend to other SDN uh, platforms. And uh, actually, it's one of the, of the, of the topics for the, the, the future release. Yeah. One more question? No. Okay. Thank okay. You. Thank you.